Ah! Welcome to the Know, I'm Mika Burton. The Nintendo Switch doesn't even have popular streaming services like, you know, Netflix yet, but according to one company, it might get PC game streaming? Rainway, an app that boasts 60 FPS streaming of PC games to compatible devices, is passing along hints that one of their next destinations is indeed the Nintendo Switch. Rainway recently tweeted, We received an update from Nintendo today and we hope to have some good news for you soon. The promise of Rainway is that as long as a device has a browser, whether it's a phone or a console, you can use the browser to stream PC games. The Switch does technically have a browser on the system, it's just, you know, hidden. So who knows, maybe we'll get some cool PC gaming related features for the Switch soon. Sounds like a pipe dream. Get it pipe, like Mario, like Nintendo. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sega is looking to become a gaming powerhouse again, judging by reports of its recent financial briefing. In a new Road to 2020 presentation given by the company, Sega says they plan on pursuing more global hits. That seems kind of like a given, right? That a video game company wants worldwide hits, but you know, hey, at least they're trying again. One of the ways they're going to achieve this, in addition to bolstering their current IP roster, is to revive some of their older major IPs. What that could mean is anybody's guess. They're currently sitting on some gems like Vector Man, Knights, Fantasy Star Online, Skies of Arcadia, Virtual Fighter, and Shinobi, just to name a few. With just a month, oh my god, a month left before E3 blows our minds, lots of game developers are starting to bring out the teases. In response to that Sega news, Obsidian sent out a teasing tweet asking, what if? That's leading to some speculation about Alpha Protocol 2, which was their joint venture with the publisher. Other developers are starting the hype train as well. Binding of Isaac creator Edmund McMillan is also teasing a secret project that he's been crunching on for several months. McMillan says, it's hard, it's weird, it's personal, it has amazing controls, it's a totally new unannounced IP, and it's easily one of the largest games I've ever made level-wise. In addition to McMillan, game director Takayasu Sawaki, who helmed El Shaddai Ascension of the Metatron, is also hinting at a new game. Speaking at a conference this weekend in Tokyo, Sawaki said he'll be showing off a new mythical concept within the next few weeks. According to Sawaki, the title is Major, not Indie, and he's not allowed to talk about it yet. And to top off all the upcoming game teases, Atlas has a new job posting for a sequel to a game that has reached number four, which will be a PS4 exclusive. Considering Persona and Etrian Odyssey have both reached their fifth entries, the speculation is this time for Shin Megami Tensei 5. So it looks like we could have a lot of cool stuff to look forward to in the next coming weeks. We'll just have to wait for E3. But not everybody is teasing new games. Some are out there squashing rumors as quickly as they can. Last week, reports surfaced that a new Thief game was in the works to release alongside with the game's series film adaptation, based off an updated listing on the production studio's website. But now, Eidos Montreal is stomping that rumor hard. David N. Fossey, head of Eidos Montreal, wrote on Twitter, apparently we're developing Thief 5 game, so we have a title. We just have to build a team, a budget, forget it. So sorry about that one Thief fan out there. And in more bad news for franchise fans, it looks like those hoping for some major Halo announcements at E3 might be waiting for quite some time. Over the weekend, 343 broke the bad news that Halo 6 will not be making an appearance at the show this year, according to a Reddit post by community manager Sketch. Sketch wrote, We've said this already, but we'll have a little something at E3, but it's not related to the next major entry in the franchise. Of course, that little something got fans hopeful about those Halo 3 anniversary rumors that have been going around, since this year does mark the 10th anniversary after all, but apparently that's not happening either. Sketch wrote, OMG, stop! There's no Halo 3 anniversary. Well, that's very definitive. As for what that little something is, it's been a while since we've heard more about that Spielberg-produced Halo TV series. I almost forgot about that, so let's cross our fingers. Minecraft for the Switch came out last week, and some have noticed that the game runs in 720p, both in docked and handheld modes, which got some people wondering, is that because the Switch can't handle 1080p? Nope, says Microsoft. In a statement to Time Magazine, Microsoft says the resolution isn't a question of system power, but stems from issues currently experienced shifting from one resolution to the other when docking and undocking. Which means that, theoretically, we could get 1080p in docked mode further down the road, since games like Zelda switch resolutions depending on whether the Switch is docked or undocked. But also, it's Minecraft. Is the resolution that important? Do you really need to see such HD lava? Apparently. Apparently, not everyone loves superhero movies and sequels. 
Hollywood could be headed to the worst box office in a decade, according to the Los Angeles Times. The newest predictions say that the summer box office returns, which runs from the first weekend of May to early September, will be down 5 to 10 percent from last year. That would mean that the box office revenue in the U.S. is expected to fall from $4.45 billion to just $4 billion, which would be the worst in a decade. And some executives are worried that it's because there are too many sequels and franchises just saturating the market right now. As 20th Century Fox head of domestic distribution Chris Aronson put it, some of the tent poles are just not as strong as this year. Pirates of the Caribbean? It's the fifth one. Transformers? It's the fifth one. So yeah, who's up for watching Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 this weekend? Go enjoy that baby Groot, everybody. It was recently reported that HBO has four Game of Thrones spin-off shows currently in the works. Turns out that was super wrong, we apologize. There are actually five spin-offs in the works, according to creator George R. R. Martin. In his live journal, yes, George R. R. Martin must be the only man alive still with a live journal yesterday, Martin wrote, We had four scripts in development when I arrived in LA last week, but by the time I left, we had five. We have added a fifth writer to the original four. No, I will not reveal the name here. But Martin wrote that he said he doesn't like the term spin-off. Instead, he said that these new shows exist in a secondary universe. As he explained, we're not talking Joey or After Mash or even Frasier or Lou Grant, where the characters from one show continue on to another. So all of you who are hoping for the further adventures of Hot Pie are doomed to disappointment. Every one of the concepts under discussion is a prequel rather than a sequel. Some may not even be set on Westeros. Rather than spin-off or prequel, however, I prefer the term successor show. How about a successor to your last book, George? You know, just an idea. When's that coming? Huh? Never? Cool. Lots of people are mad about the recent issue of Net Neutrality, and recently, John Oliver urged watchers of his show Last Week Tonight to sound off on the issue. In particular, he pointed them to the website of the Federal Communications Commission, which is planning to ditch Obama-era rules that prevent broadband and wireless companies from interfering with the speeds of sites and apps that consumers use. Needless to say, the commission was flooded with feedback on the issue, and FCC Chair Ajit Pai got his fair share of hate mail online. And borrowing a bit from Jimmy Kimmel, Pai read some of his mean tweets in a video on the Independent Journalism Review. There was stuff like, I bet Ajit Pai eats mayo sandwiches, and Ajit Pai has an insanely punchable face. That was pretty good. But Pai read like a good sport. He seems like a generally likable guy who wants to let telecom companies decide what you see on the internet. So likable. A massive cyber attack on Friday caused headaches around the world, disrupting the British healthcare system and halting manufacturing at production plants in other countries. It was a ransomware attack, meaning that the hackers offered to unlock users' data, you know, for a price, usually about $300. And apparently the tools in the attack were developed by the US National Security Agency. The malware, known as WannaCry, exploits a vulnerability in Microsoft Windows operating system that allows it to automatically spread across the networks. Security experts think that the vulnerability was developed by the NSA and was released on the internet last month by a group known as the Shadow Brokers. Microsoft put out an emergency patch for Windows, and in a blog post, it strongly criticized governments for stockpiling information about cybersecurity vulnerabilities. But there's a silver lining. Apparently, the hackers didn't make much money from the huge attack. According to an analysis by security researcher Brian Krebs, the hackers have thus far only pulled in about $26,000. So it just goes to show, never negotiate with cyber terrorists. Well, that's all the news we have for you today. For more news from every corner of the internet, be sure to like this video, and if you are new around here, subscribe to the Know Why Don't Ya. We do news a lot, and then you'll see it. Bye, everybody. Hi, Nintendo Switch doesn't even have a popular shirt, but it's a real light up like that, but it's going to be like a Sega is looking to become a gaming powerhouse again, judging by reports of its recent, recent, 